Hello and welcome to episode 7 of the Antler Studios development blog. I'm Harry, lead programmer on Project Grove. I'm afraid you've got me this week as Tom is having a very well deserved week off. Because of the aforementioned week off, today is going to be a little different from normal. Uh, we don't have a huge amount of development updates to show, so I'm going to be talking through with you what I've most recently done, which was the visuals for our latest potion, the cloud slide. This video is going to be a pseudo walkthrough, pseudo tutorial. It's going to be a little bit more technical than usual, and I'm just going to be walking through the various systems involved in creating this effect. If it's something that you guys are interested in, or it's something you'd like me to give you the blueprints for, hit me up on our Discord, the links to which can be found in the video description. And without further ado, let's get into it. So this is essentially what the cloud rail looks like with the particle systems turned off and the visualizations with the mesh turned back on. We essentially have a custom mesh shape, which is like a little dish and we use it in a spline mesh component. Um, so you can see as it rolls out, all the different segments are being added. So there's quite a few segments here. I think there's a max of 180. Uh, but essentially, the, the logic of what we're doing is we're taking the bounds from each segment and we're spawning a Niagara system in its place to look like a cloud. So here you can see all a uh, few of the spline nodes and the spline mesh components that are spawned onto it. Although we make these invisible, we still use them for collision. Um, and we're also going to use them to determine where we're spawning our Niagara systems. So you can see some of the seams here, That's that represents one fine mesh component. So this is the cloud rail blueprint or it's uh, one function within it. This is the part where we actually determine whether or not we're allowed to add a new static mesh component and if we are, we go ahead and do that. And then once that's done, we add a particle to basically take its place in, in world space. All this stuff here is going to determine the location and rotation of the Niagara system and where we put it in the world. At the point this function runs, the most recently placed spine, spine mesh component um, will be the location at which we want to spawn our system as well. Um, so that's essentially what these values here are determining use a similar function to work out our rotation it's constricted just so that we have a maximum and minimum roll uh, that we've arbitrarily decided on but essentially we're going to use all that to determine where our Niagara system goes and then the Niagara system is literally just going to take one uh, variable which is essentially its box size user dot box size is a custom Niagara variable uh, all it's used for is to determine the space in which the particles can spawn. This is obviously because some of the sections of the uh, cloud rail are a little bigger than others due to turning. And that's all there really is on the blueprint side of things when it comes to the visualizations anyway. The only thing I would note is the way we determine the box size is essentially getting the bounding box of the most recent static mesh component, subtracting the maximum from the minimum values in the respective axes, making that into a new vector. And this will give us a vector in local space that we can then plug into our Niagara variable. This is the Niagara system that we're generating. It's a really simple system. It's based on the hanging particles emitter that you get right out of the box with Niagara. The only real difference is are that I've added some rotation to the sprites. Obviously I've changed the sprite material and I'm spawning my stuff in a much smaller box location than the hanging particle emitter does by default. Uh, the only real things I've changed beyond the default are uh, spawn rate. I've reduced it to 30 because I have slightly larger sprites. Um, again, it's between 40 and 80. And I'm also using a custom user variable to determine the box in which the particles are spawned. This, as I've mentioned, is what we're setting here as part of the cloud rail blueprint. Um, so here it's 100 by 100 by 100, but it can it will be it's dynamic when it's spawned into the world. Down in the renderer, I'm using the smoke material that comes with the starter content in Unreal. The only thing you really need to do to it uh, in the Niagara system is make sure that you're dividing your sub UVs by eight because it is cut into eight sections. This is the actual material. Again, it's super simple. It's just texture coordinate plugged into a few different texture samples 
uh, multiplying them by particle color and then applying a depth fade. The material itself is translucent and unlit uh, and it's just just make sure that you have Niagara Sprite sticks as well when you're using it. And that's it, really simple, really straightforward. Kind of annoying that, <laughs> to iterate through so many different things to settle on this in the end. By ensuring that particle color is plugged into your material system, you can modify the color at runtime. So I'm using a user parameter to determine that. Again, this is being set in the blueprint and the color itself is determined by which variant of potion that you're using. And so the final result then is the cloud rail here. It comes down to the board pretty nicely and I think when you're riding it, it looks suitably cloudy. <laughs> The cloud rail itself is essentially an alternative we've come up to for a glide. We wanted to have a glide in the game, but we kind of felt like it wasn't a very visceral potion, and that was something that was one of our goals with this one. But we also understood that functionally, if we had a glide where you essentially flew and you moved really fast, that could break our game in a lot of ways, given that this game is very much about vertical space um, and navigating spatial puzzles. So we've tried to come up with an alternative. The, the cloud rail as it is, the, the fall off of the cloud is twe completely tweakable by our designers. Tom should essentially be able to play with all these different parameters and basically work out a, a good distance and size for the cloud rail. It'll mean that this thing should be usable in order to reach certain parts of the environment whilst not allowing you to jump so far that you can essentially break the game. Obviously it still needs a huge amount of tweaking and polishing but at this point we're kind of ready to put it into that state now that it's got most of its core functionality down. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have please remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, it makes a huge difference to us as we're just a small team. If you'd like to play Project Grow, our demo's out on Steam now, so do remember to check that out. If there's anything specific you'd like to know more about, any of our potions or anything about Unreal Engine, let us know in the comments and we'll do our best to get some content to you. Thanks for watching, I think you're going to have Tom again next week, uh, so we'll see you then.